Mm. Uh, staying with you, the let's look at the financial systems here now. You've said here that even the employed are not gainfully employed. You've talked about wastages and no credits created. How do we do, what can we do to move out of this position that we find ourselves besides fiscal discipline? Well, the key thing basically is that most institutions run based, most countries run based on their institutions. Just like the body works on its organs, the hair, the brain, the heart, and all of that stuff. What I'm telling you now, and I said this in 1986, 30 years ago, you can't begin to do a Dutch auction of your currency without killing off your real sector. You must ask yourself, how did you subsume the investment bankers into a universal banking system, in which you had people who had no way of defining the risk and profit profiles of what they were doing? What you're doing, basically, you're running a cashier in the economy. It's more like monopoly. Until you deal with that, you find out that you're still only, only able to execute 21% of your budget. The ratio of um, your um, ratio of your uh, capital expenditure to your current expenditure is still terribly skewed. And I think we need to deal with that. We haven't dealt with this since 1986. The chicken have only come home to roost. That's what we must deal with first. Okay, let, let me come to you, Mr. Dele. Um, looking at the GDP figures for the third quarter of 2017, the nation grew by 1.4% yeah. year on year in real terms. And uh, the second consecutive growth since the emergence of you know, the economy from yeah. recession. All of these figures for most Nigerians, they don't understand. Oh. What do they translate to, that growth? I think first and foremost, let's look into a micro economy, which I believe is in Shambu. I mean, Mr. Yere spoke about um, availability of credit to our businessmen and women. That's one part, a major part in there. Now, when we begin to talk about growth, people need to see, it needs to be translated on their table, on the common man. Now, employment plays a very key and fundamental role in there. Now, recently, I've been advocating for this for quite some number of years now when we talk about minimum wage and thereabouts. Now, there's a difference between minimum wage and the living wage. Now, he did mention and said, um, we should calculate and look at the percentage of people who are gained food, in, I mean employed. It's a key factor. Now, when we talk about minimum wage, it's a different thing to living wage. So what's the difference? Well, minimum wage is what, uh, what we propel and say, okay, this is how much the government is saying they could afford or everyone should be able to pay everyone that works in the economy. A living wage translates into the indices of the economy that actually measure what you earn, the value of what you earn to what you can buy with that money. Now, if we're talking about 18,000, for example, as minimum wage, I've asked this question quite a few times. How did you arrive at that figure? Minimum wage has been calculated, okay, starting from age indices. For example, 16 to 18 should be on a level of earning, 18 to 22, different level of earning, then 22 to 24 and thereabouts. Now, there are calculations that many countries use to be able to come to a figure and say this is what the economy compared to what the living standards could be. But here, it's a different phenomenon. So now, when the common man looks at the growth and they look back, they can't feel themselves three times a day. Um, they can't afford the basic things that they need to live on in the economy or as a, as a household. So where is the growth coming from? There are figures that many people don't understand. We're growing with the largest economy in Africa, but how do you describe that to a normal layman on the streets? It doesn't, it, it, it doesn't translate to anything to so them. They don't understand it. So what the government needs to do, really, is to make everyone be a participator, to participate in the economy as we move along. That brings about awareness, that brings about employment, job creation, skill acquisition, okay? We need to really invest, I mean, the government, into technical education, which I've mentioned severally. People will tell you every time that there's no jobs in this country. There are jobs in this country. That is my, I've been in this industry um, globally for around about 20 years. Now, the issue now is, 
There are jobs in this country, but we lack the skill of people to take over those jobs.